is Josie. It's my very first official YouTube video. I know there's a video already on my channel, but I could sell strict into making that one. But when I had it edited, it come, came out really right. It came out okay. It's not far from perfect, but it came out good. And I had nothing to lose. I decided to upload it to test the waters. But I'd like to come to you today with my an introductory video. And that will be the hashtag so many questions. And this is a sewing vlogger's tag going around YouTube where various sewers or sewers are coming together. And it's a list of 40 questions and you select just 10 questions you'd like to answer. No one would want to take you through all the 40 questions. And this is more or less no telling people who you are and what you love to do. And I thought I'd start off with this. And it will be a best way of letting people who watch this video know who I am. And my first question will be, where are you from? I am born and raised in Uganda. That's home in Africa. And I've lived in Leeds for the last four years with my husband and two children. And I could say Leeds has turned to be a good place for us. That's our second home now. I previously lived in Manchester, that was between 2010 to 2012, returned home and then came back to the UK, that was in 2015 to today. So that makes it the four years. We like it here, but still I can't say I don't miss home. Uganda is still my first home and Leeds is my second home. And the second, second question is, how and when did you start sewing? First used the sewing machine when I was eight. It was the manual sewing machines with a treadle. I was quite social that I couldn't reach the treadle down while sewing. So I used to hang onto the table, put my hands on top of the table to be able to get my feet down to sew with it. It was my mom's machine. She used to sew part time after work and I just watched her. She didn't deliberately teach me to sew, but I kept on, I just watched her sewing. And I used to sew, sew a few things here and there. I never sewed anything sensible that I could show for it, but yeah, it worked. Then I remember 10 years ago, I had a dream of sewing and I was happy and I thought that was a sign to get a sewing machine. I bought a sewing machine and I used it to mostly make alterations for the one reason that I'm quite a small bodied woman. <laughs> So it's always hard to find clothes that fit me within the adult section of women's clothing. So I always found myself needing to take in my clothes to get the best fit. And so I kept on doing that for the longest time. I made a few pieces with a sewing pattern, with official commercial sewing patterns. And I could say they were far from perfect until about two years ago when the seamstress tag was going around YouTube. I watched so many of them and I was inspired by the various ladies who have started sewing and they make their own clothes and they're able to make clothes that fit them right and they're happy to wear out and around. And from then I was inspired to start sewing and I've never looked back and I'm looking at what I've managed to do and learn within two years. I'm actually thrilled that I took this this step in life and i'm happy it really makes me happy creating a clothing a piece of clothing that i can be proud to wear and tell people that i made it and my third question where do you sew i'm blessed to live in a house that has three bedrooms yeah i've got two children who would ideally have their individual bedrooms but my children are so close they would rather not be split in different bedrooms they prefer sharing a room which left the smallest bedroom in the house to be converted into my sewing room and that's my special corner. I call it my my happy place. Yes, I would prefer calling it my happy just place. There's nothing so special about it, but it gives me my space where I know I can close the door, forget that there's anyone else in the house and enjoy sewing and making clothes and creating things I'd love to look at. And the fourth question, what's my proudest make? My proudest make is a dress that I'll link over here. I'll attach a picture here. It's a battle style dress I made last month for our 10th wedding anniversary. I remember we were going away for a mini honeymoon with my husband. And 
I made a dress for one of the date nights we we're going to have and it's by for my proudest make. I like the fit. I like that I put a lot of emphasis to it. It was that special dress that I will always look at and say that's my anniversary dress. It made me feel happy that I could create something that fits me nice and beautiful and I was proud to wear. So I could say that's by for my proudest make. And I hope there will be many of such kinds to come. And the fifth question, best sewing hope stroke challenges. Biggest sewing, sorry, it's biggest sewing hope stroke challenges. My biggest hopes would be to be able to draft my own patterns. Because I realized still I can't get the indie, indie sewing patterns that could fit good on my body. But I still find myself I need to make a few alterations here and they are one of the major alterations I make on most of dress patterns I come across is it. a sway back adjustment then often at times I have to lengthen the patterns around the thigh bone because my femur bone is quite long so I always add in a little an inch or two that's for both trousers skirts I always find myself needing to do that and I also have a shorter torso and I believe if I've managed to draft my own patterns it gives me the liberty to be able to create whatever I want without having to go through a lot of adjustments before I get down to cutting into my fabric then sewing it. And the sixth question, who do you sew for? That's an interesting one. I could say me. <laughs> I mostly sew for myself. Then probably my daughter comes next and so make for a few pieces. I rarely make much for my son, but I try my best to make a few pieces here and there. But the most unfortunate person in the house is my husband. I don't make him much. I think I've made him one thing that was a jumper I made for him for his for a Christmas present. But in all honesty, I do many alterations for him, mostly shortening his jeans, taking in the length on his jeans. And I keep doing that a lot. But at least I do something for him, taking in his jeans. That could be pretty good. I'm hoping to dig into making him a few pieces here and there, probably t-shirts. Other than that, I don't think I'm about to start making him shirts. That cause for, it still would be a level of, level of love. Not that I can't do it if I wanted to, but that, it would be much easier if you bought him and already ready to wear a shirt. But probably in the future, who knows, I might progress to create much more than what I am able to do at the moment. Then question number seven, woven, woven or knit, that's fabrics. I could say in the start, when two years ago when I started sewing, I preferred working with woven fabrics because they seemed much easier to work around, even with a mat. I had an overlooker but still wasn't confident to sew on the needs until last year when I was blessed to own a, a cover stitch machine and I could say it's been a game changer. I know the cover stitch machine predominantly hems. The sleeves, the hem gives you a good hemming on the sleeves and at the bottom on the hem and probably on the neck band. I could say I could do that with the twin needle but still I just found that the, the seams, the stitching on the twin needles were not as strong as I would have wanted them to do and I didn't really like the zigzag hemming the neat fabric to the zigzag but when I got a cover stitch machine I felt like it was a game changer it makes knits come through very fast if whenever I want to make something quickly like a t-shirt or anything with just an overlock and a cover seat machine, I'm so sure I could be able to make something very fast. So I could say right now, I prefer needs to ovens and also because I don't have to make the many adjustments I've talked about, mostly in the needs, which I must make when I'm sewing with the oven fabrics. Then my eighth question, printed or PDF? Yeah, I'm on the borderline, but I think I could say PDFs. Because I'm able to print off a pattern, cut through it, and still print it off again should I need another copy. Printed patterns, sometimes I have a feeling I might go for a smaller size, then I need to go up a size bigger after I've cut. If I had cut into this pattern already with a smaller size and then I need to enlarge it, I wouldn't be able to go back to that. But with 
PDFs, it gives me the liberty to reprint it, get the size I want and go on with my sewing. So I think I'm team PDFs. And I honestly print them at home, glue them together. I don't find it as tedious as most people do. So I'm always happy to go with the PDFs. Then best tip, stroke technique you have learned from YouTube. I started sewing. I didn't really understand why I would have a lot of fabric buckling at the back of my dresses until I went deeper into it and understood what exactly is causing that and I realized, oh, I have a sway back and there's what they call a sway back adjustment. And when I realized what it entails ah, and how it is it can come together, I learned it from different videos on YouTube. It's been a game changer with fitting my clothes. And that makes me still, I can't say I run away from making tours. I try to make tours of everybody so I'm working with. And with a sway back adjustment, I know after I made that adjustment, the clothes will fit right and I would like what they turn out to be. Then the last question, hmm, that's heels or flats. This has nothing to do with sewing, but I could say I'm both heels and flats. On a normal day, when I'm doing school runs, when I'm walking around town, when I'm doing fabric shopping, give me flats throughout. I rarely wear trainers. I only wear them if I must walk around. But I love a good, comfortable flat shoe. Because I'm, I'm known to walk a lot. I love walking. But if I'm driving and oh, I know I'm traveling by car, I would love a good heeled shoe. So I always pick out my heels when I'm stepping out. And also when hubby is driving. When I'm driving, I'll still go for flats. But when hubby is driving, I know I'll go for heels. Yeah, I could say those are the 10 questions I came up with. That brings us to the end. Oh, I didn't introduce these questions were put together by JJ, the Camden Stitch, and Laura from the Specky Swimstress. I'll add their links to the bottom. And I could say this is just what I could come up with for now. See you next time. Oh, what am I wearing? I'm wearing an old Zen Kami by True Bias paired with my Blackwood cardigan. And yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to come to you again next week. I plan to be uploading a video every week, every Friday or every week. It might not be Friday, but every week. Hope, hope I see you again. Please like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.